Hey everyone, I thought I'd show you what I've been working on. Uh, I was inspired to do this project by uh, those ultra capacitors that I showed in a previous video. So I mentioned maybe using them to build a coil gun uh, or a spot welder. But another idea got into my mind. This is a transcranial magnetic stimulation device. And um, I'll let you look it up if you're curious about the details, but basically it's, it's just a very large capacitor bank that's discharged through a coil. And by holding the coil near your head, you can induce an, uh, an electric field in the brain tissue, which causes uh, neuron stimulation. So let me just show you how it's built. This is a trigger circuit. And we've got a, a smaller capacitor, uh, 555 timer, and a switch to start the timer, and a transistor to dump current into the gate of this monster uh, silicon-controlled rectifier. So these hockey puck uh, SCRs can handle huge amounts of current, and even better, they can handle huge amounts of rates of change of current. So I'll, I'll put a link to the specs on this one up in the video. Uh, I think it's rated at 1200 amps, and it can, it can block about four and a half kilovolts. Uh, the capacitor bank is made up of uh, two strings of five capacitors. Each capacitor is 400 volts at 470 microfarads. And I'm charging the capacitor bank through here. And on the other end of this cable, uh, I've got the high voltage supply for uh, one of the parts of the electron microscope. So I can choose a voltage anywhere from 500 to 2,000 volts. And um, these resistors here limit the charging rate. And so far, this has actually posed the biggest problem uh, with the circuit so far. So let me turn it on. I'm going to turn on the power voltage supply and wake my meter back up. Uh, we're monitoring the charge voltage through this high voltage probe. So one millivolt equals one volt. So since we've got one volt here, we've got a thousand volts on the uh, capacitor bank. And if I hit the trigger, we get a nice large crack as the coil shakes and then the voltage comes back up to about a thousand volts. So the, <laughs> so the idea is that you would hold it. The reason that we're using this butterfly shaped coil, by the way, one of these goes clockwise and the other goes counterclockwise, is that it creates a, um, a peak magnetic field in the middle here. It's a much sharper focus so that um, instead of just using one of these coils, which produces sort of a cloud of, of stimulation with this, you can actually move the focus around quite a bit more easily. So I'll show me actually using this thing in a future video. I haven't actually gotten very much neuron stimulation yet because I haven't taken it over a thousand volts. Uh, there's a few more refinements I want to make. Like I say, those charge resistors are the biggest problem so far. But I have been measuring the discharge current just by uh, measuring the uh, voltage flow through the ground part of the circuit here. You can see I've got the oscilloscope probes just right across that piece of copper wire. So by measuring the voltage differential across there, I can measure the amount of current during the discharge. So I used my milliohm meter to figure out that it's one milliamp across here. Then I can just multiply the, the voltage by a thousand and get amps. All right, well, let's I'll run another. You can see it takes uh, about a second or three to charge. I'll give you some round numbers that I found in the literature in case you're curious what the circuit is doing. This uh, combination coil here should have an inductance of about 20 microhenries, uh, 10 for each coil. And um, I didn't measure that, it's just sort of calculated. And also according to the literature, uh, the capacitor bank should be about 100 microfarads at 2 kilovolts, although it could be much higher. Um, the rate of current change in the literature is often cited to be around 10 amps per microsecond. So, and the peak current is often about between five and 10,000 amps. So the uh, pulse period lasts a couple hundred microseconds and peaks at you know five to 10,000 amps. Uh, this should produce a field of maybe a few thousand Teslas per second, or the, or the, a change in magnetic field of that. And that's that change in magnetic field is actually what induces the uh, uh, the current in, inside the brain tissue. So the reason that the ultra capacitors wouldn't work for this project is because um, the inductance of this coil 
resists uh, current flow through it, it re resists the change in current flow. And uh, to overcome that inductance, we need a really high voltage. So the ultracapacitor bank only got up to like 20 or 30 volts or something. And even if you have a, essentially no resistance between the capacitors and this coil, if you uh, close the switch, there's, there's not going to be nearly enough current flowing because the inductance actually prevents it. So the, the benefit with, or, or I mean, the, the necessity of having a higher voltage is to overcome the inductance of the coils there. Same thing with a coil gun. It actually would not work with the ultracapacitors because um, the uh, inductance of the coil inside the coil gun would just overcome that voltage from the ultracapacitors. So you really need a higher driving voltage in order to get a really high, high speed changing magnetic field. Okay, well, uh, in the next video, I hope to refine this a little bit more and uh, show you it in use. So stay tuned for that. Okay, see you next time. Bye.